Now, this is all fine. These are things that you would learn in a course in EMAG, but I'm here to tell you that there's a more elegant approach to Maxwell's equations. Hmm, I wonder what it's going to be. Well, you know what it's going to be. It's going to be in terms of differential forms. Now, this is going to require a little bit of effort in terms of the setup. We're going to have to look at three new interesting form fields. The first is the Faraday two-form, F. That is the wedge of the electric field one form, alpha E, with dt, and then you add to it the flux of the magnetic field, phi sub b. This is a two-form field. In addition, there is the Maxwell two-form field, M, that is given by alpha b wedge dt minus phi sub e. Now, notice how these are sort of symmetric. It's kind of like you're switching the e and the b, but then there's that minus sign that sort of twists everything up. These dual two-form fields are tying together the electric field, the magnetic field, space, and time. It's kind of cosmic. Now, there's a third item that we need to look at. This is called J. It is a three-form field that is given by the wedge of the flux two-form of the current with dt, and then you subtract off the charge density rho times the three-form dx, the space three-form. Now, this three-form field J is combining together what the current is doing and what the charge is doing. Okay, so we've got F, we got M, we got J. How are we going to use these to reveal the true form of Maxwell's equations? Well, this is going to take some work. So buckle up, let's go. Let's consider the Faraday two-form F and the Maxwell two-form M. And let's do some derivations. In particular, let's compute their derivatives. Let's compute the derivative of F. Well, F has these two terms, so I need to distribute the differentiation operator across these two terms. I get D of alpha E wedge DT plus D of phi sub B. Now that first term being a wedge product, I can distribute differentiation across that. I get D of alpha E wedge DT plus alpha E wedge D of DT. Hmm. Oh, but then I also have that second term. Now this one gets a little difficult because B depends on both space and time. So what I get is the divergence of B times dx, the space three form, but I also get another term. I get the flux two form of the time rate of change of B wedged with dt. Okay, so now I have four different terms. What do I need to do? That first term, when I take the derivative of alpha e, this one also gets a little bit complicated. I'm going to simplify things and tell you that what you wind up getting is the flux of the curl of e wedge dt. There's another term involving the time derivative of e, but because of the wedge with dt, that goes away. Now for the second term, Oh, that's right. I see a d squared. I see d of dt, and that's automatically zero. So forget that. For the third term, I use Maxwell's equations to say, oh, look, the divergence of b is zero, and that just leaves me with that fourth term. Okay, now let's keep going. I see the curl of e sitting inside of that flux two form. I'm going to use Maxwell's equations again to say that that is what? That is really minus the time derivative of b. And now I see that I have two instances of that flux two form, one with a plus sign, one with a minus sign. The whole thing cancels and I get zero. That's pretty cool. That means that the derivative of this Faraday two form vanishes completely everywhere. Ah, now let's do the same thing with m. We're going to follow the same pattern. When we take the derivative of m, I get the derivative of alpha b wedge dt minus the derivative of phi sub e. That first term, the derivative distributes, I get d of alpha b wedge dt plus alpha b wedge d of dt. For the second term, again, I have to be careful, I get minus the divergence of e times dx minus the flux of partial e partial t wedge dt. 
Okay, now let's follow the same steps. That first term, kind of complicated, but in the end it simplifies to the flux of the curl of B wedge dt. That second term there, because d squared is zero, poof, that's gone. For the third term, oh, I've got the divergence of E. Now I have to use Maxwell's equations to get rho, so I have minus rho dx, and then that last term is that flux two form of the time rate of change of E, wedge dt. Okay, following the same pattern as before, I'm going to apply Maxwell's again. I'm gonna use the fact that now the curl of B is J plus partial E partial T. And now, well, things don't simplify quite so much, but I can cancel out the partial E partial T terms, and I am left with phi sub J minus rho dx. Wait, where have I seen that before? Oh, that's right, that's precisely this charge current three form J. Ah, so after all that work, what we see is the forms version of Maxwell's equations, this elegant version that says df is zero and dm is j. That's so, that's so beautiful, that's so nice. You know, if you're gonna get a Maxwell's equations tattoo, definitely get this version and not the other one with the four equations and all the funny symbols. Okay, now these equations look a lot more elegant. They are a lot more elegant, but Look, it's not any simpler. It's still Maxwell's equations. You still need to understand what all of these form fields mean. So it's not any sort of simplistic reduction. If anything, if anything, this forms version of Maxwell's equations is, is deeper. It has a little bit more structure. Now, you may be wondering, do, do I really need differential forms in order to understand Maxwell's equations? No way. Nope, you don't need it in the same way that you don't need differential forms for fluids or any of the other things that we're going to talk about. However, this forms version does make it easier to work with potentials. And this eventually reveals that that Faraday two form is the curvature of the electromagnetic potential. And whoa, that takes you to some really deep differential geometry really quickly. We're not going there, but it's there and it's super interesting. And on the physics side, if you really go deep, then the forms version of Maxwell's equation allows you to work very naturally in the setting of general relativity in space-time. So if you're trying to work with Maxwell's equations in, I don't know, around black holes, something like that, you're going to want the differential forms version. Now, we're not going anywhere near that stuff, but you should know that the forms version of Maxwell's equations is out there, and it's very elegant and very powerful.